morning. My name is Charlie Lorenz and I'm here on April 1st, Monday morning, on a semi-cloudy day. There's some blue sky out, very little wind. Ocean's fairly calm. Some intermittent waves here and there, I would say from about six feet or, or better. But mostly what we're doing is I'm representing MAW, the Mendocino Abalone Watch. And we're here using the scope and some other members along the bluff here are using binoculars. And what we're doing is we're kind of monitoring and watching some of the abalone hunters out here, ensuring that, well, you know, they may have some questions and we're here for education, ed educational purposes. The other reason is just to be sure that, you know, nobody's doing anything astray out there. We want to be sure that they're following the regulations and uh, not breaking the law. And if we do see something, what we're going to do is take some notes and possibly report it to Fish and Game. So if you look out over here, you're going to see the water level is so low because of the minus tides that the rocks are more exposed. And what's happening is we've got rough water on the outside of those rocks, are kind of breaking up, creating a nice calm little cove in here for these ab hunters to basically take their time and pick, hopefully, a legal sized abalone. But uh, I'm looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, ten. There's at least ten ab hunters out here at this point in this particular area. And so far, what I see, they're, they're doing pretty good. Um, I don't see any laws being broken. Crawling around out here, wet and slippery, could be treacherous. So. <laughs> a lot of people opt to try and walk on the property to get down into what they call the mill side headlands, okay? But uh, again, just for those that are interested in coming out to this part of the um, Port Bragg to go diving for abalone, it is illegal to be on the property. If you're going to make your way out there, you're just going to have to stay close to the shoreline, make your way around the rocks. Some people even opt to swim out there where it is swimmable. But again, on minus tides, it's very, very difficult because the water is so shallow and uh, a lot of rocks, like I said, slipping. It's almost like a crawling type of a method that you have to use in order to get out into some of these areas. But again, is it worth it? Well, for these folks out here that are hunting for abalone right now, they must seem to feel it is worth it. We'll see when we visit them a little bit later, we'll see what kind of abalone they pulled out. Big ones, average sized ones, barely legal ones. I mean, most people will, when they either purchase or rent abalone hunting gear, i.e. Um, wetsuits, thick gloves for protection in the rocky environment because there's gonna be lots of muscles and sharp edges to cut their hands pretty easily thick, heavy boots with thick, heavy soles. Preferably something that when you're walking around in the rocks that, you know, you won't slip. You know, you got something with good tread on the sole so you can get good gripping on the, on the rocks and everything. But um, I have even seen some rock pickers even so much as go out and go buy hiking boots, you know, real thick, heavy hiking boots because of the fact that, again, because of the treacherous rocky environment, the possibility of slipping, twisting an ankle. <laughs> boots are really nice because they are high up on the ankle. They help preventing, you know, twisting your ankle so much that, you know, gives good support. Of course, it get wet and your feet could get cold. The options that you have is, you know, you wear something that's either going to give you good support and uh, get you through the rocky environment easily, um, but your feet might get cold, like with regular hiking boots. But if you wear diving boots, which they do have diving boots out on the market with good, real heavy, rubbery soles, good tread on them, so you could get good, you know, traction in the rocks. But mostly, the big trick in, in making your way in through these rocky environments is taking your time, step by step, crawling sometimes. Knee pads are really nice. Some people opt to get a little heavy knee pads because if they slip and hit their knee on a rock or as they're crawling around, knee pads 
will help the longevity of your wetsuit so they don't wear holes in them so easily. But in any case, <laughs> a lot of gear is needed and to each his own. You know, you can go out and rent gear as what I suggested or you could purchase it. But beware in these kind of rocky environments, whatever you purchase, they are going to get trashed. They will get trashed big time. When it comes to hunting for abalone, all the rules apply. Got to have a, a seven inch gauge with you, an ab bar for prying the abalone off, a legal ab bar that is. There's a lot of rules that designate what's a legal ab bar. But in any case, some kind of an implement to carry the abalone. Backpack, some people are using inner tubes. Some people, I noticed one person down here using uh, one of those uh, freezer um, containers, you know, with the zip, zip lock freezer container. It looked like he attached some straps so he can carry it on his back. Um, a lot of times inner tubes in a real, real rocky area sometimes could be a nuisance because it's so big and bulky. So streamlining is, is sometimes really essential in the rock. Um, I've seen a lot of people popular using the backpack just like the regular, you know, school backpacks that you know, throw in, not real big, it fits on the shoulders, and they, you can fit three abalone in there easily. But uh, if you're going to be diving out here, that's where the rules change, you know, bringing fins. Um, boy, what kind of fins do you bring when you're diving in this kind of environment? Well. Hopefully some shorter fins versus the real long fins, okay? The long fins are really nice for diving in deeper water, but in shallow water environment, I've seen people wear these really long fins and, and try to walk in the rocks with them and take a wrong step and put all their weight on that fin and snap the fin in half. <laughs> and those long fins are costly, so think in terms, if you're going to be diving or rock picking in shallow, shallow water, long fins aren't going to work for you. Use the shorter little fins, uh, a little bit more convenient. Some people opt not to bring fins at all. I mean, especially if they're just rock picking. But be forewarned. Again, personally myself, if I'm going to be rock picking out in this area, I'm going to bring a pair of fins. Only because if I slip and fall, a wave comes in and drags me off the rock, especially because on these kind of currents or tides where the currents are heading out to the ocean you might be dragged out and if you don't have fins to help you propel against the current <laughs> you could be in danger so fins might be a good idea to bring along in any case well when it comes to minus tides what is a minus tide well a lot of times you look at what they call a tide book and it'll des designate in any 24 hour period the level of where the ocean is. If the ocean is at a high level, that's called a high tide. If the ocean is at a lower level, it's called a low tide. Now how can you tell the difference? Well, if you watch some of these uh, coves over a 24 hour period, the high tide, the rocks disappear. <laughs> if it's a low tide, all of a sudden all the rocks will appear and you will notice that it's really, really shallow out there. Now, some people like the low tides for rock picking. Divers particularly like the high tide for diving. But in any case, the designation is when you're going to pick your hunting for abalone is up to your experience. Whether you're just a rock picker, if you don't have experience diving, then generally speaking, you're just going on the low tides. But if you're a diver, you know, you can go on low tides, but mostly they're going to be going on high tides. Um, some people like to hit right at the low tide, what they consider the slack tide. There's no movement in currents. And then, they, you know, for about 20 minutes to a half hour. And for most people, that's all it takes just to find abalone and take it. But if it takes a little bit longer, and then the tide starts rising, currents are pushing back toward the, to the beach or to the shoreline, that's nice. I mean, it's a lot safer to plan low tide going to high tide, currents pushing you back to the beach for, you know, you want to head home. Versus going high tide to low tide, where co currents are heading out toward the ocean. <laughs> currents are pulling you out at that point, and sometimes it's a struggle to get back to the beach. For some people, they get in trouble. They get tired, they get cramps, may need a rescue at that point. 
Hi, I'm Charlie Lorenz. Come join me on a scuba diving tour, a kayak diving adventure, or an abalone hunt here along the beautiful Mendocino coast of Northern California. Call Charlie at North Coast Discovery, 707-937-2091. That's 937-2091. The next few days, I'm telling you, are going to be really nice here. Weather forecast is pretty much like today, pretty nice. The weekend, unfortunately, a lot of people work during the week and they want to come over on the weekend, but the weekend doesn't look so good. <laughs> Looks like we're going to get some wind, maybe more rain, and some bigger waves. So be careful where you're going to dive. Try to pick two or three different dive sites. Don't just be gun ho on just one, because I'll tell you, given the, the weather on any given day, Conditions can be different from one dive site to the next dive site. But watch the show. We will give you many more hints. We're going to talk about Van Damme. We're going to talk about Casper Beach and many, many more. But good luck in your abalone hunting and take care.